Mr. Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, is sending a new message. After years of self-imposed silence, Farrakhan is thundering forward with radical new plans to save the poor and working class black community. He's often been characterized as a racist and anti-Semite. He wishes to end the bitter antagonism that exists between himself and some Jewish organizations. All this seems to indicate that Minister Farrakhan is hoping to play a more prominent role in national politics. Is that true? First, I'd like to say that uh, it's not the black and white world of Louis Farrakhan. I didn't write that. I know, but whoever did, it's a, it's a black and white world created by white people when they brought our fathers into slavery, segregated us, and kept us in a separate state status and station until this very moment. Why have you been quiet, though? Why are you now coming forth? Where have you been? I've been working very hard in the black community trying to raise the level of consciousness of our people. I mean, is this a, a campaign now, an, ass an assertive campaign to come forward? Well, sir, looking at the statistics, the terrible condition that black people are in, uh, with one quarter of our young people in prison, either on supervision or under parole, and the infant mortality rate as high as it, as it is in black unemployment increasing. Something has to be said, something has to be done. So I'm out here now appealing to the government and to black people and to white people of goodwill that we have to sit down and come up with a just solution to this problem. I'm living in that down. 21st century, doing something mean to, to it. Do it better than anybody you media, ever seen do it. Screams from the haters, uh, got a nice to ring to it. I guess any superhero need his theme music. No one man should have all that power. Clock's ticking, I just count the hours. Stop tripping, I'm tripping off the power. Your timing is perfect. Have a shot at an integrated uh, America it would be where somebody we really else. do get rid of these uh, fears. Do you think we have if a chance? If I may respond, the Kerner Commission, established by President Johnson in 1967, said that there were two societies, one black, one white, one uh, rich, one poor, and uh, the Kerner Commission gave specific recommendations that had to be followed if America believed in integration. 20 years after that, a group of scientists got together to see what the progress was. And the progress is that we have a larger middle class, but the masses of black people have gone backward. And the country is not only separate and unequal, but in worse condition today than it was then. So I don't think, Mr. You make my daughter here, you should put it on me that I've given up. America has never believed in integration. Never. Jeff, we're not used to seeing photographs of dead bodies on 60 Minutes, but the story on 60 Minutes this week shows devastating pictures of lynchings. Lynchings became so acceptable, onlookers would send picture postcards to friends and family. This card, depicting the horrific image of a burned corpse, casually notes, this is the barbecue we had last night. For viewers who will be disturbed by these photos, um, what, what would you say to them? Why, why include them? Why include such graphic photos? You know, I think that some people will be offended by seeing the photos. But it's so important to show them. Uh, for us, it really is. That's reality. That's what happened. Our story is about a part of history, really almost 80 years of American history, that isn't in the history books. We don't see these pictures. We don't talk about it, you know. And in the first line of the story, Oprah says, it's a reckoning. There is a reckoning taking place in America. It is, with history. And so we have to show them. So you're saying that if, if you don't show the photo, sometimes there's no story. There isn't a story. You know, we self-censor a lot in the news business, and we're very careful what to show and not show the American audience. And you think that the that news executives are, are too careful? Yes, I do. The power of you know television is about showing what really happened. 
So Terry, can you just pull up the Jesse Washington photograph for a second so we can talk about our options? There are stories that come along as a producer. The minute you hear about it, you just can't stop thinking about it. And you know that it's an important story that you want to share with the 60 Minutes audience. And that's exactly how I felt about this story. I'm Denise Chetta, and I'm a producer at 60 Minutes. Yeah, I think the one where the guy is lifting him up mm -hmm. on his shoulders is more powerful. That's crazy. Yeah. Did you think about children and, and whether children should see these photos? Yes, I thought about that a lot. I have three children, and I asked them, you know, did you learn about lynching? Do you know anything about lynching? And all three of them said no. Like, we heard the word, but we never really knew what period or who the victims were. And so that actually made me feel, you know, like it's even more important to educate the next generations about what happened. Keep in mind, there were children at some of these big events where they lynched people. Uh, that's one of the surprises to me in the whole story is that now in one in one case, 15,000 people showed up in a town square in their Sunday best. This was one of the more remarkable photographs that we included in the story. It's um, the lynching of Jesse Washington in Waco, Texas. And he was tortured while people looked on. And there's one photograph from this um, lynching where you actually see a man holding up his friend so that he can get a better view. There was a lot of community acceptance of these crimes, and you can see that clearly in this photograph. Some of them are shocking, and you can't get them out of your head when you see them. I keep thinking about a few of them. That you know, One is the woman that we show. Uh, I keep thinking of her. This photograph is Laura Nelson, who was actually lynched with her son. If you look at the full photograph, she's hanging from a bridge, and on the other side of her bridge is her teenage son. I keep thinking of Wes Johnson, who was the first victim in the story. Uh, that's the only picture of him in his life, as far as our reporters were able to determine. You were able to get this photograph from somebody who was actually there. Yes, there were one of his relatives. One of his relatives was there. It's a devastating photograph. It sure is. James Johnson and Faye Walker Howell, who we met, the descendants of Wes Johnson, they both very much felt like the image of Wes Johnson should be seen. And why? I think that seeing what actually happened uh, will open up the eyes of uh, the American people. The same thing that happened with the Emmett Till situation. His mother wanted the world to see what the casket what, what, yes, what hatred had done. The descendants of Wes Johnson uh, talked about these photos, but there are also descendants of the, the white spectators mm -hmm. who will be watching this story. Yes. That's a difficult part of this story. Yeah, I think it is. I think that uh, that is part of the reckoning as well. We tend to think of it as the South, but it happened across the country. The lynchings? Yes. Yes, they, they, uh, they found more than 4,000, and, and no doubt there's far more than that. When you see these, these faces of children and women, and smiling men, I mean, I mean, how do you make sense of that? Well, I think if you look through history, one thing that becomes obvious is that any group of people can be whipped into a frenzy or a fury, um, can do things that are abhorrent. Anyone is capable of it. I think so. You learned a lot from this story. I learned a lot from the story. I think everybody will learn a lot from the story. You know, it's hard to believe this happened in America. You, my people, who has been lost from your own kind, Hey, peace and blessings, beloved. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my page. Join me on TikTok and Facebook. Assalamu alaikum.